this is Tim Donner with Liberty Nation TV. We are at arguably the most important juncture yet in the still young Donald Trump presidency. And as the critical defining issue of tax reform dominates the domestic agenda, the president is in the midst of an equally critical 12 day trip through Asia aimed at, among other things, building or strengthening our alliance in limiting the North Korean nuclear threat. Few people have followed the president's grand tour more closely than Liberty Nation's own man on the ground in London, Mark Angelides. He's been writing daily articles on what the president is doing. So Mark, as he approaches the halfway point of this trip, the longest any president has taken in 25 years, what has Donald Trump been able to accomplish? Well, actually, it's been a, an incredibly productive trip. Uh, not only has, uh, has the president built on the strong relationship that he already formed with uh, the Japanese uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, um, but he's also been doing a lot of uh, backroom talks in terms of not only how to deal with the North Korean threat, but also about what's going to happen at the, uh, the APEC and the ASEAN talks that are coming up in Vietnam next week. Let's talk about China for a moment. Do we sure. know whether China is really serious in its pledge to help us reduce the nuclear threat in North Korea? China is arguably the the biggest and most important visit that's happening. Uh, this is why he's spending more time in this country than any other. Um, in terms of dealing with the nuclear threat, it's only China that can really help. Um, sure, he's been talking in South Korea and he's been talking in uh, Japan about building a, almost a grand coalition of uh, Asian nations to deal with Kim Jong-un's uh, rhetoric. Um, but it's really in China where the difference is going to be made because it's all well and good. Uh, America, England and other countries putting sanctions are on, on trade with the country, especially in terms of exports. And things. But you have to remember that more than 90 percent of all of uh, North Korea's exports go to China. Um, and so if China's not on board, difference. sure, they might take a 4 percent hit if the other nations uh, stick with it. But if China's not on board, nothing's going to happen. Fortunately, um, what's happening in China right now is uh, Premier Xi Jinping and President Trump are, are working together. They both have goals they want to achieve. Uh, one, well, two of the goals that the president has uh, will be obviously uh, more cooperation and uh, a firmer line on North Korea to help uh, not just limit the rhetoric, but also to try and bring uh, Kim Jong-un to the table uh, for talks, uh, actually get him involved in international diplomacy, which is something that's been sorely lacking from the region. Um, but secondly, th there's a huge trade talk happening in China right now. Uh, it's, it's immense. It's going to change uh, U.S. manufacturing for the better if things go to plan. Um, and so these are the two things that Donald Trump's after. But Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping is after things also. Uh, and the two men are, are really working together who's going to give what on each thing so what xi jinping is after is he's looking for uh, firstly for the president and american general to tone down a bit of the the talk on them being currency manipulates because they'll be launching petro un um in the coming year uh, and if there's no confidence in the chinese monetary market then it's not going to go anywhere. So what they'll be looking for is support from Donald Trump on that. Um, and the second thing that uh, Xi Jinping will be after, more trade, um, specifically with products that can only come from America. For example, I, I don't know if you're aware, but American beef goes for around $60 a pound in China. Um, and so there's a lot of these specific quality products that China is looking to bring in to make much more affordable. Um, I believe the, it works about 20, it's about $20 billion a year uh, for American beef, whereas the Australian New Zealand beef at the moment, this is a half a billion dollar business. And what China is looking for is more from America. And so they'll be wanting, instead of 12 to 14% tariffs, down to more 4% tariffs. 
um, to coincide with what's happening in uh, Australasia. All right, let's move on to South Korea for a minute. Uh, President Moon and the regime there in South Korea is understandably hesitant to poke the bear that is Kim Jong-un uh, directly north of them. What can South Korea do in conjunction with the U.S. in tamping down the nuclear threat from North Korea? Well, um, as our listeners know, uh, South Korea would likely be the first casualty uh, of any military action taken against North Korea. So they are looking for a diplomatic solution above all else. Um, in, in terms of what they can do personally by themselves is very little. If they could have done it, they, they would have done it already. Um, now that uh, Abe Shinzo in Japan has uh, been re-elected on dealing with the North Korean situation, that was his main platform. Um, what Donald Trump's trying to do is make uh, a close connection between Japan and South Korea. Um, relations have been in place, but not always warm between the two countries often because of their history. Um, so what they can do is start building, let's call it, uh, as opposed to a grand coalition, let's call it a, a minor coalition where the different countries are working to put across a, a deal, as it were. I mean, in South Korea, President Trump said, we need to bring Kim Jong-un to the table for a deal. Um, but a, a sort of a minor coalition of the countries where they can all say, this is what we can do for North Korea in terms of integrating it into the, the global markets, in terms of um, giving enough faith that uh, Kim Jong-un will feel secure in his position while at the same time creating more freedoms for the people in North Korea which is really what Donald Trump's been hammering home on this visit. He's been saying it's about the people in North Korea, who he says are wonderful people. I'm not sure he knows any of the people there, but he's saying they're wonderful people, they're hard workers. Now this we know for sure. Um, and what he wants the best deal for the people there. It's not really about what the leaders at the top get. It's about making sure that people, real people are taken care of, that, that they're not under the boots of a regime that they have opportunities for education, for healthcare, opportunities to, to develop themselves personally. And that's what Donald Trump's trying to do with this, this minor coalition. That is Mark Angelides, our man on the ground in London. And as the president continues and concludes his trip with visits to Vietnam and Indonesia, we'll be back with Mark in a week to discuss the sum total of Donald Trump's grand tour. I'm Tim Donner and this is LNTV.